Hey, Vsauce, Jack here. What's the craziest time signature you've ever played? If you mostly play rock or pop, it's probably 3-4 or 6-8. If you've gone into some progressive rock or more advanced jazz, you may have come across 5-4, 7-4, or 9-8. If you've gone even further into experimental territory, you may have come across things like 11-8, 15-8, or something like 5-16. But I bet you've never played something like 6-9. But before we get into that, let's make sure we understand time signatures first. When you construct a time signature, you have two numbers. The top number tells you how many notes to play in a measure. The bottom number tells you what type of note you're playing. So here, you would play four quarter notes. Or in this example, six eighth notes. Makes sense, right? If we go back to the six nine, though, we would be playing six ninth notes. Well, what is a ninth note? same way as you think about playing a 4-4, four, four, but musicians have found a way to cheat into getting these odd notes. So what we do is we take a measure of 4-4, four, four, I draw it out of a circle here because it's going to be easier to visualize later on. And what we can do is we can subdivide this into tuplets. The simplest example is with triplets, so three notes, three beats in this case. So if we put the three over the four, you can see how they match up and you would get this rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I'm playing three notes over the four, four. We can do this with nine as well. We draw it out here. And you might ask, why do we have to complicate things by putting the nine beats over a four, four? Can't we just play nine beats? Well, no, because if you just play the nine beats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we would just write that as nine, eight, nine, eight notes. Putting the nine beats over the four, four makes it so that they can't be eighth notes because four, four is already divided into eight, eighth notes. They must be something else. There are ninth notes. So now that we've superimposed them and everything's spaced nicely with each other, we've done it, right? Not quite. Remember, we were trying to get a 6-9 time signature, which means we only need to play the first six ninth notes and just leave out the last three. So this is where things get a little tricky to demonstrate. So let's move it over to the keyboard. All right, now let's give each beat of our measure of 9-9 nine, nine a different note to create a bass line. I'll use these notes. And I'm going to play against a 4-4 metronome set at 69 beats per minute. We've played our 9-9, nine, nine. you'll notice 6-9 gets really complicated because if you only play the first six of the nine beats, you only get just over three clicks of the 4-4. Four, four. That's really hard to do counting it on your own in your head. So I recorded myself playing the 9-9 nine, nine and chopped off the last three beats in the computer program. And I've looped the 6-9 that remains, so you can hear it here. So what I've done in the final song is recorded that 6-9 bass line on bass, and then on that 69 BPM metronome click we had, I recorded guitar chord accents on each click. Uh, and using specifically 6-9 chords. Then I recorded a drum part like this, which is a 2-3 polyrhythm, but I accented the first beat of every third loop because 3 times 2-3 is going to give you 6-9. So you can feel it as kind of a 6-on-9 pattern. And then I recorded a melody using the 6th and 9th degrees of the D-flat major scale because our bass line is nicely in D-flat.